What's up? My name is TechNumber here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize your PC and Total War Warhammer 3 to get the best FPS possible. This guide's only going to lightly touch on Windows optimization, but mainly focus on in-game options. If you'd like a more in-depth guide to get tons more out of your PC, check the description down below for Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as related guides that'll help you get more. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. First of all, go ahead and update Windows and your graphics card driver if you haven't already. Hit start, type in update, and go through the Windows update process. Then for your graphics card, in the description down below you'll find download links for Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. You can either download and install the latest drivers through those links, or of course if you have software like Nvidia GeForce Experience, you can use that to update your graphics card driver instead. Speaking of updates, is it worth moving from Windows 10 to Windows 11 for performance? No. There's no specific features in Windows 11 that give you extra performance that make it worthwhile to move from 10 to 11. The only reason you should do it is because you like the new features or you're ready to go through the huge learning curve of the different UI. That's why I'm sticking to Windows 10. Then let's go ahead and clear out some extra space on your drives, which is especially important if they're near capacity. Hit start, type in cleanup and open disk cleanup as administrator. When it opens, choose C drive and click OK. Wait for it to scan, and when it pops up, simply tick everything on the list except for a recycle bin, which you can go through and clear out later manually, and thumbnails down here if you use lots of pictures on your computer. Then click OK, delete files, and wait for this deletion process to finish. If you have your game installed to a different drive, make sure to open it up once again as admin and select that drive instead. Say D drive and follow through the exact same steps. When it's done, hold start and press R, and inside of this run dialog, type percentage, temp percentage and hit enter. Then a new file browser will open up. Hit control A to select everything, then shift delete to delete them, skipping the recycle bin. Click yes, wait for it to scan and click continue if necessary with do this for all checked. If you see any areas like this, click do this for all and skip. Rinse and repeat for all the errors you ran into. When it's done, you should be saving a ton of space on your computer. Then head back to this PC, C drive and Windows. Inside of here, scroll down to temp, once again, control A, shift delete and enter. Skip all areas. And now we're done clearing out temporary and leftover files on our computer. Now let's get into the power plan. Hit start, type in power space plan and click on choose a power plan. Inside of here, you'll likely have balanced, power saver, as well as high performance options with one of the first two selected. Simply choose high performance and you should immediately notice a difference. If you have CPU specific high performance plans, pick these instead. If you'd like to try out the ultimate performance power plan, in the description down below, you'll find a bit of code that you can copy. Hit start, type in CMD, run it as admin, and paste it in here with control V, then hit enter. Upon doing so and refreshing your power option screen, you should see a brand new power performance plan. Select this and you should immediately notice an improvement in performance. Now let's go ahead and optimize our running programs on our computer and programs that start up with our computer. Press control shift and escape all at once to bring up the Windows task manager. On the processes tab, you can sort by CPU, memory, and GPU to see what is using what on your computer. The fewer background programs you have running, the more resources you have available for your game to take and run at the best performance possible. Then we'll be heading across the startup tab at the very top. Inside of here, sort by status and everything listed as enabled starts up when your computer logs in. You can find unwanted programs, right click and click disable. That way you'll have to manually start them yourself, speeding up the startup process and of course you'll have less programs to close when you want to play a game. If you're a power user, head across to services at the very top, click open services and inside of here, sort by startup type. Everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. Double click unwanted services and change it from automatic to manual. That way, either you or a program has to start it up when it's necessary. Don't change them to disabled. This is a very basic guide on optimizing things that start up with your computer. And instead, in the description down below, you'll find a really in-depth guide that shows you how to get to programs that aren't even listed here. Of course, if you're one who uses overlays, such as the Discord overlay, those could decrease FPS and increase input latency. If you don't actively use them or you don't actively need them, you should try turning off overlays that you don't use. This includes performance monitoring overlays, which you shouldn't have running unless you're specifically benchmarking games. Every tiny bit of available resources matter when you're trying to get the most out of your computer. Finally, let's get into some game-specific ones. For this, you'll need to know exactly where the game is installed. 
If you have the game on Steam, right click, hover over manage and click browse local files. However, if you're like me and you got it through the Xbox Store app via the Xbox Game Pass, steps are a little bit more confusing. Open it as such, click the three dots, then click manage. On the files tab, click browse over here and you'll be taken across to the game's installation. Your drive, Xbox games, Total War, Warhammer 3. Open this folder, open content, and inside of here, we're looking for warhammer3.exe. Right click this and click properties. In here, on the compatibility tab, click change high DPI settings, tick this box at the very bottom, select application, and click OK. Some people get better performance in full screen mode when they have disable full screen optimizations ticked here as well. If you're someone who plays the game in full screen mode, which you should for better FPS, you may want to come back and enable this afterwards to see if you get any sort of meaningful improvement. This forces exclusive full screen instead of a faux windowed borderless full screen mode that's used by default in most games. For me, I'll be leaving this off and click OK. Now look at the very top where the path is, right click here and click copy address as text. Then hit start, type in GPU and open graphics settings. Make sure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is ticked and if you have the game installed through something like Steam, select desktop app here and choose browse. Then inside of here, click at the very top and paste in the address we just copied, then hit enter. Then double click on warhammer3.exe. After clicking OK, it should appear on the list. If you installed it on the Xbox Game Pass, select Microsoft Store App from the drop down here instead. Then from select an app, scroll down and click Total War Warhammer 3. Then click Add. Both ways should get it added to the list as such. Click Options and choose High Performance, then Save. When you've done so, at the very top, click Home. Now choose Gaming. Inside of the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure that this is turned off unless you specifically use the Xbox Game Bar. Then the Game Mode tab, make sure that this is turned on. If you're someone who's used the Xbox Game Bar before or you have it installed, it's a good idea to make sure that Microsoft's version of Shadowplay isn't running in the background, constantly recording your screen. Hit Start, type in Xbox and open the Xbox Game Bar. Then click Settings at the very top and head across to the Capturing tab where you'll make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is unchecked. Then click Anywhere to close this. Now finally, before we actually launch up the game itself, we need to know if the game is GPU or CPU limiting us so we can optimize further. When you're in a demanding scene or running a benchmark in game, hit Control Shift and Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. Head across to the Performance tab and simply see if your GPU is hitting 100% all the time or your CPU is hitting 100%. Whatever is maxed out all the time is what you're limited by. If you find that your graphics card is holding you back, it's a good idea to disable hardware acceleration in other programs on your computer, most importantly browsers. This includes Chrome, Firefox, and programs based on Electron and similar frameworks like Discord and Steam. In Discord, for example, head across to User Settings in the bottom left, then on the Advanced tab, you'll find hardware acceleration that you can turn off. By doing so, Discord and other programs will use more of your CPU instead of your GPU in the background. They may become more stuttery when lots of animations and video decoding or encoding are going on, so it may be a good idea to re-enable these later when you're not playing super demanding games. Of course, the alternative is to simply close those programs as well, including your browser. Speaking of CPU or GPU limited, if you find that you're CPU limited instead of GPU, which this guide is mainly going to focus on in just a bit when we get to the in-game settings, it may be a good idea to actually raise some of the settings in-game to balance out your computer. If you're CPU limited, you'll find that no matter how low you drop your in-game graphics settings, you won't gain any performance. Instead, the game will just look worse and worse while keeping the same performance. If you find that that's happening, it's a good idea to crank some settings up especially ones that you may notice more than others, such as lighting and shadow effects. But anyways, now let's get into the actual game to optimize in-game settings. I'll click play over here and launch up the game. When you get to the main menu, click options and head across to graphics. Starting on the display tab, you'll want to select main. The quality dropdown is what you'll use to get tons of FPS, but we will get into the advanced section in just a moment. This quality section here turns down all of the graphics settings under advanced and should be the easiest way to gain extra FPS. Simply drop this and FPS will come your way, assuming you're not CPU bound. For now, we'll head across to resolution. This should match the resolution of your monitor. For me, I'm using 2560 by 1440, so I'll select that here. Then click apply changes if you've changed anything. 
Run in a window, I wouldn't recommend, as it'll lower your FPS slightly, and brightness over here is user preference. The recommended option here simply adjusts all of the options under the advanced tab to give you the best performance that this program expects. It is, of course, just an estimation. Head across to the advanced tab over here. What you'll want to do is disable anti-aliasing unless you absolutely hate jagged edges. If you do, turn this on to FXAA or TAA. I find that FXAA applies a blurry effect to absolutely everything, so you may prefer TAA. For me, I'll have this off. Texture filtering and tropic filtering doesn't have any effect on FPS, so it can comfortably be left at 16x. You can play around though. You can play around with this, however. VFX detail. I would go ahead and lower to medium to keep some quality, otherwise you can drop to low. This is a game with tons of special effects and things going on, so if there's too much happening at once, of course you'll go ahead and lose frames. That's what this over here will control. Tree detail involves something you're not always going to be staring at. For this, I'd recommend leaving it on medium. Unit detail, especially if you find yourself far above your units, instead of being zoomed right up onto them, you can comfortably lower this to medium or low. Of course, this is also situational. The more units you have, the more FPS you'll be dropping. Depth of field, I'd recommend leaving off unless you're going for a more cinematic look. Screen space reflections, you should have set to off for the best performance, but of course you can try on. As it's not ray traced SSR, it's rather just the old way of doing SSR that shouldn't take away too much performance. This is a rather cheap way of doing it. Lighting quantity can have quite a bit of impact on performance, so I'd recommend leaving this on low. Otherwise, if you don't like how it looks, you can raise it back up. Corpse lifespan depends on your CPU's power. If you have a really powerful CPU, you can leave this on permanent or even the highest option, 120. Otherwise, you can drop this if you find that you're CPU bound and you'd like to get some performance back. Then, texture quality. This depends on your graphics card VRAM. If you have tons of VRAM, you can comfortably leave this all the way up without worrying about losing FPS. Otherwise, if you have a low-end graphics card, change this to low. Anything with about 8 gigs or above VRAM, you can usually leave on high or ultra. Shadow detail is something you're not really going to be caring about while you're controlling thousands of units. You can comfortably drop this to medium. I wouldn't recommend turning this off unless you absolutely need the extra performance as it will have quite a big visual impact. Grass detail, once again, isn't something you're going to be staring at, so setting this to low should have a great impact on FPS and a tiny impact on visual fidelity. Terrain detail will have quite a large difference as you are looking at the ground most of the time. I would recommend leaving this on medium at lowest, otherwise things may look a bit clay-like. The building detail, once again, is somewhat similar to terrain detail, have this too low and they'll look quite clay-like. So if you find yourself around buildings a lot, you may want to leave this on medium, otherwise you can drop this to low. But once again, it's situational. If there's no buildings, this won't have any effect on FPS. Unit size allows you to scale the number of entities in each unit battle. You may want to have this to lower numbers, especially if you have a less powerful graphics card. If you're comfortable using FPS just to keep the thing looking rather cool, you may want to keep this on the higher options. The porthole quality toggles the models used in advisor and character panels. So, of course, 2D and 3D. 2D will take you back to the older way that the game looked, but of course, if you like to keep it updated, you can leave it on 3D. This will have an impact on performance, though not huge. The fog option over here allows you to control volumetric lighting in fog. This requires shadows to be enabled. So if you have shadows enabled, you can change the setting here between low and high. For me, I'll be leaving it on low just because this won't really be noticeable. The unlimited video memory option, I'd recommend leaving unticked unless you'd like to play around with it. V-Sync should almost always be off in every game unless you're specifically getting screen tearing where the top half of your screen doesn't match the bottom half. Vignette I'd recommend turning off, but of course it gives you a more cinematic effect, darkening the edges of your screens. That's entirely user preference. Proximity fading fades out units when they're too close to the camera to avoid clipping. You'll usually want this on. SSAO, screen space ambient occlusion, is something you should leave on for better graphic fidelity and should have a tiny impact on visual performance. Sharpening is user preference. For me, I'll usually leave this on just to keep things nice and sharp and not blurry. Screen space shadows shouldn't have too much effect on performance as once again, it's not ray traced. This is a rather old way of doing things and shouldn't have a huge impact. You're already controlling the shadow quality previously in the options here. Cloth simulation will take a ton of resources, especially when there's tons of cloth based objects in the scene moving around. This is something you can turn off though it usually has a large impact on your CPU and not so much on your GPU. Depending on what you're limited by, you may want to turn this on or off. 
Resolution scale, you should always leave it 100% to stop your screen from being blurry. The UI scale, however, is user preference entirely. If you change UI scale, make sure to apply it as it changes this menu as well. Graphics card and video memory is just for your reference. Finally, you have a benchmark option in the bottom right, which we can click after applying changes. That is rather important just to see how things go. You can enable an FPS overlay through, say, Steam or through third party applications to see what you're getting while you're going through the benchmark. But before we do that, let's run through the rest of these tabs. Audio is user preference, and I'd recommend leaving audio quality on high. This shouldn't have any effect on your performance, but it will have a huge effect on what things sound like. Keyboard, user preference, the options down over here have to do with gameplay. These ones again are user preference, including text and audio language. The final tab over here is just credits, nothing you need to worry about. So with all that out of the way, I'll enable an FPS overlay and get into the benchmark. I'll start a benchmark using my optimized settings first. For this, I'll use battle. As you can see, there's a lot of jagged edges. This is something that anti-aliasing can fix at a slight performance hit. For me, I don't mind it too much. I'll take the performance and sharpness of it. Speaking of, sharpness is also something that'll have an impact on this. Of course, in this benchmark, we'll have to wait for it to get to the actual battle itself in order to see what our FPS drops to. Just with these troops approaching each other, we're sitting at around 100 FPS, which is rather good. Let's wait for some of these special effects. There we have it, with a lot more going on, we're sitting at around 90 FPS on average and dropping the more things are going on in the scene at once. Still pretty good. As for whether I'm CPU or GPU limited, my GPU is sitting at 70% usage, which is rather high, which suggests that I can lower my graphics settings even more if I need more FPS. My CPU is sitting at around roughly 50% overall, so more than likely I'm not CPU bound. So with this out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the unoptimized benchmark. I'll exit this and simply go with the recommended options, which is simply Ultra, which maxes everything out over here. I'll apply changes and hop straight into the benchmark, the same one that we just ran. You can immediately notice the difference. Things look quite a bit blurrier, but of course there's no jagged edges on objects. I much prefer jagged edges rather than things being blurry in the distance. Already you can see just on approaching each other, we're sitting in the low 60 FPSs, which is way far off the 100 plus we were sitting at after optimization. So from my optimized guide straight to this, there's already a 40% decrease in FPS. Let's wait for some actual combat. There we go, things are happening. I'm sitting around 60 FPS, which isn't too bad. It hasn't dropped too much. Dropping down into low 50s at times. So not too much of a change here, though it is still quite a dramatic decrease. Exiting out of the benchmark, yes, I had VSync disabled, so it was just sitting at around 60 FPS on average on a 3080 Ti on ultra settings. With everything optimized, it was sitting at 100 plus most of the time, which was a great improvement. So anyways, that's really about it for this video. Once again, if you'd like to further optimize your computer, in the description down below, you'll find Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as other related guides that you may want to follow. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.